In this video, we're going to go through the example of diagonalizing what's known as a Hermitian matrix. So the defining property of Hermitian matrices is that they are equal to their Hermitian conjugate, where the Hermitian conjugate is denoted by its matrix and a little cross. And the Hermitian conjugate is defined as taking the transpose of your matrix and finding its complex conjugate. So as an explicit example, we're going to diagonalize the following matrix, which has i, the imagine, imaginary number, square root of minus one, along this diagonal. Once again, we start by finding the eigenvalues of this matrix. by solving this equation. So this gives us the following. We need to find this determinant, which results in this equation that we need to satisfy. And the solution to this equation gives us both of our eigenvalues. So lambda one is equal to plus one and lambda two is equal to negative one. So now we have distinct eigenvalues. So from here, we can try to find the eigenvector for corresponding to eigenvalue lambda one. And we do that once again by solving this system of equations, which gives us the following. So x and y denote the components of our eigenvector. And this has to equal to zero. So you'll notice that both of these equations are telling us the same thing. Namely, that the condition we have to satisfy when choosing x and y is that minus x minus i times y has to equal to zero. And one set of parameters that can satisfy this is if x is equal to minus i and y is equal to one. So this gives us our first eigenvector. And this eigenvector has a norm of square root of two, meaning that our normalized eigenvector is given by this. We can then start looking for the eigenvector corresponding to lambda two, carrying out the same procedure. We need to solve this system of equations. And once again, both of these equations are telling you the same thing, specifically that the condition we have to satisfy and finding the values for x and y is that x minus i y has to equal to zero. And one possible combination for this is to say, if x is equal to i and y is equal to one, then we can satisfy this condition. So our second eigenvector is given by this. Once again, the norm of this eigenvector is square root of two, meaning that our normalized eigenvector
is given by this. All right. So from here, we can construct the matrix that we're going to use to diagonalize H or her mission matrix by combining, uh, by constructing it from the eigenvectors we just found. So I'm pulling the one over square root of two that's common to both eigenvectors out. And this gives us the following matrix that would diagonalize our matrix H. And one special property of Hermitian matrices that's useful for computation is that the matrix that diagonalizes a Hermitian matrix will always be what's known as a unitary matrix. And the special property of unitary matrices is that their inverse is equal to the Hermitian conjugate. So this makes the computation of the inverse of C uh, very efficient. So this means that inverse, we keep the one over root two because there's just a constant factor. When we take the complex conjugate, every complex number changes sign. So uh, this becomes i, this one becomes minus i, because these two are real numbers, they remain the same. And we need to take the transpose of this matrix, right? Because remember the Hermitian conjugate is complex conjugate of the transpose of the matrix. And you can do these operations in whichever order. In this case, we perform the complex conjugate first, and then we're taking the transpose. So this I remains in place. This I is switched with this one. So this goes like that. And then this one remains in place. And once again, you should satisfy yourself that following operations give you your desired diagonal matrix D. All right, so that's how you diagonalize a Hermitian matrix using the special property that the matrix is built from the eigenvectors is a unitary matrix with this property that the inverse is equal to its Hermitian conjugate.